Good morning, morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm listening to BB Winans in Jesus' name. Good morning, Mary. Good to see you. What's going on, First Lady? Our EP, Executive Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Elise. Good morning. I'm listening to In Jesus' Name by B.B. Winans. What's going on, Deacon Richards? Good to see you this morning. Give everybody a second to get on, just by a few more seconds. God in prayer. Uh, amen. It's good to see all you this morning. Uh, welcome to Word in the Basement. Uh, we're back, uh, back to our regular routine. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, just for being such an awesome God, Father. We ask you right now to continue to bless us, continue to give us uh, what we need that we may be able to function through life, that we must be better servants and better ministers for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. What's going on, Sister Anita? I see you. I see you. Good morning. Listen, uh, just a few house cleaning before we start. Uh, one, starting in October, we are hopefully going to transition all our Facebook lives to our uh, Got to Move Facebook page. I will no longer be uh, doing Bible study and, and church from my personal page on Facebook. But starting in October, first Sunday in October, we'll be transitioning over to Got to Move. So that means you need to go like our Got to Move page. Uh, if I think I sent most of you an invite, but go like it. So that way we'll start uh, streaming from there. Uh, so that will be starting first Sunday in October. So that gives everybody an opportunity to get used to the fact that I will not be streaming from my personal page. Uh, I will be, we'll be officially going to our Got to Move Facebook page in October. Also, there will be no Bible study this Tuesday, but however, I will be um, preaching at the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church with the elect, uh, pastor there is pastor-elect uh, Latique White. I will be doing one night of their revival service, starts at 7.30, so that will be at the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Uh, so I will be putting out information address. There should be a flyer on Facebook, so that's where I will be on Tuesday night preaching for their revival. Uh, then we'll be back in the house at the Holiday Inn this Sunday. Uh, please come out. We're going to have a great time uh, in worship service. So next Sunday, we will be back in the Holiday Inn. If I think of any other announcements, I will let you know. Uh, so let's get to this word. Let's get to the word. Uh, today, the word comes from Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And I'm going to read uh, verses 30 through 31. Verses 30 to 31. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they, not, they did not even have time to eat. Let me read that again. Jesus says, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. What's going on, Pastor Davis? To this morning, I want to talk about knowing when to shut it down. Knowing when to shut it down. Uh, as we, as a ministry, we're always talking about, and even our, our acronym of Got to Move stands for maximizing opportunity, gaining victory through excellence. We want to push people to be the best them, the best person they can be. We want you to be the best. We want you to maximize every opportunity that God has laid out. We want you to, to operate in excellence so you can gain victory. But I think many times we, we, we tell people to maximize the opportunity to be successful, Sister Cheryl. But how many of us really maximize 
the opportunity to rest. See, what you have to understand is in order to be successful, uh, Sister Kim, uh, in life is that, yes, you have to have a balance. Yes, you can work hard and, and work long hours, but the reality is you have to schedule rest. Hey, what's going on, Brother Adam? Uh, you have to schedule rest, and that's just real talk. Uh, that's real talk. You have to schedule rest, and if you don't schedule rest, you trying to be successful in life, it will be very difficult because many of us keep going and going and going. And what I re realized that if you don't make the decision to shut it down, uh, you will be involuntarily shut down. And you could be shut down to a point or a place in your life that you're not able to do great ministry going forward. Uh, and I don't care whether you're starting a business, whether you're going to school, whether you're in church or pastor, whatever your position are is in life. You have to find an opportunity to rest because if you don't, uh, you will be ineffective and you're not maximizing opportunity. Let me let me just be clear with you. Those who do not get rest, you're not even operating in excellence. In other words, uh, what's going on? Good morning, uh, Pastor Washington. Uh, Pastor Don, uh, uh, the problem is, is that many of us, we think that the more we work and the tired we are, that we're really accomplishing something. But the reality is, is that what you're doing is, is that there's negative outcomes that come out when you don't get any rest. Uh, you know, even at your job, those, I, I never understood those pastors, those who have jobs and won't take leave, uh, won't take the annual leave, won't take their, uh, PTO, uh, uh, their time off, and and you're thinking you're doing something, but let me explain something to you. If you don't take time off and something happens to you and you die, I promise you within a week and maybe not even that long, they will advertise your job for the next person. So you have to take care of your body. You have to take care of your uh, mental health. You have to take care of these things, and you have to take the time just to shut it down. And how do I know when it's time to shut it down? When, what are some indicators? What are some events uh, that may remind me to shut some things down? And when I look at Mark chapter six, there were some things and some events that happened in Mark chapter six that required Jesus to tell his disciples in verse 31, hey, let's go by yourself and be to a deserted place and rest for a while. Let's shut it down. Jesus said, listen, there's a lot that has happened. There's a lot we have done. And here's the thing. And there's a lot that we have to do and right now, we need to shut it down. We need to take the time to shut it down. So when you look in chapter 6, there are three things you need to know when to shut it down. See, you need to know uh, when you're spiritually drained, uh, emotionally drained, and you're physically drained. When you are drained in all three of those capacities, that means it's time to get some rest. Now, I don't know what your rest is. I don't know if you're going on vacation, uh, maybe going in your room, take, you know, not, maybe not leaving the house, setting off your phone. But whatever your rest is, when you get to a place where you're emotionally drained, uh, spiritually drained, and physically drained, uh, you got to get some rest, y'all. You got to shut it down. Because the reality is no person in the kingdom, we are human. We are, even though we're spiritual beings, we're physical beings, and our body, we have to shut things down. And the problem is, I think, and I think as leaders, we are some of the corporates of not shutting things down. We, I think as leaders, let's be honest, as leaders, sometimes we do push ourselves further than we should. And what happens is, as a result, the people that follow us, they think they're supposed to work like that too. But you cannot work like that and be successful in any business or any place in your life. You got to know when to shut it down. You got to know when to take some time off. You got to know when to rest. So the first thing we got to talk about, you got to know when, how things affect you uh, spiritually. When you look at Mark chapter 6, and I, and, I, and I challenge you on your own time to read this entire chapter on your own, but in chapter 6, Jesus finds himself uh, preaching and trying to heal uh, in Nazareth. He's preaching at the synagogue, and he's rejected. Not only he's rejected, then after that, he assigns his disciples to do spiritual work, preach, teach, uh, heal cast out demons, all these spiritual things. And what we must understand about spiritual things, even in ministry and even in evangelism, it, it's, it's exhausting. 
It can be very exhausting, especially when you are rejected. Amen. I know I'm talking to some pastors and some leaders uh, or even the business people uh, doing any type of work and not being appreciated, not and not, you know, being heard that that can give you a certain level of exhaustion. Because what happens is you spend a lot of energy trying to be your best. You spend a lot of energy trying to get the word out to people, and they reject you. Jesus said, you know, if they reject you, wipe this dirt just on your feet. But he was rejected in his hometown. He was rejected by people that knew him. And, and, and what happens is rejection can, when it comes to ministry, rejection can really wear you out. Uh, it can be very draining spiritually because uh, you put all this out. You preach, you teach. Uh, you share, and what happens is it's not received. So it's really difficult when you're punching, putting stuff, punching and pushing, and nothing is connecting. It's very draining. Uh, it's very draining. And what happens is when you're when you're spiritually drained, you become frustrated. So what happens is instead of really preaching or teaching people about Jesus' love, then you start attacking their sins. That's when you know it's time to shut it down. When you don't even care what happens to people, whether they get saved or not. And so we have to understand when we are spiritually drained, it's time to shut it down. Because you cannot just keep going and thinking that every time you be rejected, you're going to be fine. Rejection is hard, y'all. Uh, and Jesus was rejected. Then his disciples went out. They're pouring into people. Uh, they're pouring into people. They're preaching to people. They're spiritually putting out and a lot of times, uh, uh, ministry and work is like a bank. It's like a bank, even like your job or your business, it's like a bank. And if you're consistently withdrawing from yourself and no one is putting deposits into you, you're going you're gonna to tap out. You're going to tap out, I promise you. That's why so many pastors have quit, resigned, retired, left the ministry. Uh, so many people have left the workforce because they don't feel appreciated. How many times, how many of you have left a job, a good paying job, because you weren't appreciated? You didn't feel like you was appreciated. You you poured, you poured, you poured your life into this thing, and you didn't get nothing in return. And it's draining, y'all. It's just draining. So make sure uh, you know when to shut it down is when you start becoming spiritually drained. Secondly, um, you want to shut things down when you become emotionally drained. You need to know when to shut down uh, when you're emotionally drained. What happened is, and in, in if you start uh, chapter 6, verse 14, it talks about John the Baptist who was beheaded. John the Baptist, if you don't know, is the cousin of Jesus Christ. He, he is the cousin of Jesus Christ. This is a person that he grew up with. This is a person that was in his family. Uh, matter of fact, it was John the Baptist who baptized Jesus. Amen. You remember in the story that Jesus went down to the Jordan, he baptized him and, the, and the, uh, the, the voice of God descended like a dove said, this is my son who's well pleased. So John and Jesus were close. Many of the disciples uh, also followed John before Jesus came on the scene. They started following Jesus. So they had a relationship with John and John the Baptist was beheaded. He was executed. Uh, he was executed by an evil king because that's what his daughter wanted, his stepdaughter wanted. And death to a loved one would drain you emotionally. It would drain you emotionally, man. Death or, or breakups, divorces, uh, anything that drains you emotionally, uh, uh, sometimes not being successful in your business, uh, things at work, maybe your boss, you got in trouble with your boss, those things will drain you emotionally. And when you're not emotionally... Uh, rested, you can make bad decisions in life. You can make bad relationship decisions, bad decisions when it comes to finances, uh, bad decisions when it comes to uh, your health. So emotional drain, think in ministry and in life, you can be emotionally drained. And so now you have a situation where Jesus and his disciples have been drained spiritually now, right after this spiritual encounter and all this is going on, they're, they're pouring into people, telling people about repenting. Nobody, some people are not listening. They're being rejected. And all of a sudden, somebody you close to dies. Now you're spiritually and emotionally drained. You are a wreck. So finally, we get to, uh, we get to uh, Mark chapter 
in chapter chapter six, we get to verse thirty. So let's go twenty nine. He said, "When his disciples heard it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in the tomb." So now they went from doing ministry and being re and, and dealing with rejection, dealing with rejection, uh, trying to cast out demons, and 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 that's a spiritual war battle in the, in itself. Now they got to bury John the Baptist. So they went, they went from being rejected in ministry, casting out demons. Now they went to a funeral. That is a lot spiritually and emotionally. That, that is taxing. Uh, if you ever had to plan a funeral, uh, if you ever had to uh, be at somebody, help somebody you know, uh, who have died or their homecoming or somebody who's sick, uh, then you're trying to do ministry and all your other duties and other stuff on top of that, it's very draining. And guess what? And this is taking a toll on you. And whether you know it or not, this is physically taking a toll on you. So this is what happened in verse 30. So then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all the things, both what they had done and what they had taught. They told him, hey, we went out to the highways and byways. Then we had to come back and help bury, uh, bury um, John the Baptist. And here's what happened. Uh, they were physically tired. That is That kills you. When you're spiritually drained and you're, and mostly drain your your preaching and teaching, your your work, and you're starting your business. Uh, you're starting your business. You're you're going to work every single day, putting out putting your heart and soul in what you're doing. You're not getting appreciated. Then you have personal things. So not only besides your business, something personal happens in your life. Somebody dies. Uh, even if hey, even some of the good stuff, like for example, somebody getting married, somebody having a baby. Those those things can be emotionally draining, whether you believe it or not. Oh, because weddings, you got to plan them. Babies, they get here. You're excited. Your emotions all over the place. So even some of the good things that happen in your life could be emotionally draining. Oh, uh, then and, 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 and now it's taking a toll on these guys physically. They're tired. They're exhausted. Hey, Jesus, we did all that through the excitement, through the good, the bad, the ugly. And they're physically tired. And Jesus recognizes this. And I think Jesus not only recognizes this with his disciples, but he also recognizes it with himself that, hey, we need to shut this thing down, y'all. We need to shut this thing down. Because here, look what he says. Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. Because here's why. For there were many coming and going and did not even have time to eat. There were so many people coming trying to get the help from them that these disciples and Jesus never, didn't even have time to get nothing to eat. And that's physical. They were drained physically. They weren't even taking care of their own personal bodies. They were also, uh, let me help you all out. If you're going to do great work in, for, for the kingdom, you have to have a good diet. Now, I need to do better. That's, that's conviction in myself. I need to do a whole lot better when it comes to how I eat, what I eat, what I put into my body. Uh, the term is trash in, trash out. I need to do a lot, a lot better. But you have to get that rest. The body, they, they, were, they were done. They were tired. They were exhausted. People were coming and going. And they weren't even getting rest. They weren't even eating. So physically. So when you get to that place where you're spiritually drained, emotionally drained, and physically drained, y'all, you better shut it down. Go on a vacation. Go just go get a hotel somewhere. Don't answer your phone. Unless, you know, let people know, hey, I'm going out of town. Only call me if it's an absolute emergency. Sometimes you do have to take a spiritual, emotional, and a physical break from stuff. He said, let's go somewhere with nobody else and just rest for a while. He didn't just say, hang out, sleep, and hang out. He said, rest. And, and, and Jesus understood as a good leader, and a good, if you want to maximize your opportunity, you have to, one of the opportunities is maximizing the opportunity of rest. When rest is available, if you got leave on the shelf, take some leave. Take two, two days off. Just to restore, get your mind back. Uh, if you have a business, maybe you might not take any business for two days. You know, learn how to rest and enjoy life. Because here's what's going to happen. And why it's important. After all this, you're going to rest. One thing is ministry doesn't stop. People still hungry. People still need clothes. People still need things. Because if you don't rest, you'll never be prepared for the next mission that God has you for. You'll fail at it. The next, because he could, one thing Jesus knew, if you read six, is that Jesus fed over 5,000, thousands of people. So that's 5,000 they counted. So it's about 10 or 15,000 technically. Jesus and the type of head responsible for feeding thousands of people. How could you do that if you're exhausted? 
How can you do that if you're not where you need to be spiritually, emotionally, or physically? See, in other words, God will always try to take you to another level of ministry. There's always ministry out there, but you're no good to people if you're not no good to yourself. You can't uh, maximize your opportunities to be great if you're exhausted. Because then what happens is when you're, when you're trying to operate in exhaustion, then you're not operating in excellence. Oh, let me say that again. When you're operating in exhaustion, you're not operating in excellence. Trust me. You're going to fail somewhere. Something's going to fail. And that's when you start developing just good enough. This is good enough. We've done enough. Get your rest. Because guess what? The next phase of ministry doesn't stop. But you have to be able to take breaks in between ministry. You have to be able to rest between ministry. Uh, you got to know when to shut it down. You know your body. You know your mental health. Don't let people, do, don't let people uh, other people determine how far you can go and how long you can last. That has to be an individual decision on what you can do. And then when people look at you and they see you drain they, and they recommend you rest, rest. Take that time off. It's okay. Min Listen, ministry is going to be there when you leave. Come back. I promise you, it is not going nowhere. Uh, unsaved people are not going nowhere. Hungry people are not going nowhere. Homeless people are not going nowhere. That money, it's not going nowhere. You make that money. Even in your business, don't ever think, well, I'll never make this money. I'm not. Man, money is going to always be there. There's always opportunities to make money. Trust me. If you have a good business and a good quality business and, you, and you're doing it out of excellence, even if you take a week off or whatever, people are still going to wait for you to come back and do your business. I don't care. Pastors, quit trying to preach every Sunday uh, because you think the church is not going to be able to be without you. Let me tell you something. When you dead and gone, they're going to get you a new pastor. Bottom line. When you resign and you leave, guess what? They'll get a new pep. They'll put a pulpit committee together and get them a new pastor so quick. And, and, and you, you won't even think. You're like, what? So what I'm saying is that sometimes you got to take some time off. It, ministry will be there. Think it. They took a rest. As soon as they got done resting, guess what? They had five over 15, 10, 15,000 people to feed. It'll always be there. So get your rest. Um, I praise God. I was able to get a little bit of rest on my vacation last week, but it ended up being, I didn't get no sleep because we was having fun uh, every night. We was up late every night, but it was it was awesome. It was worth it. Uh, I got a little rest this weekend, uh, but you got to get rest, man, or you ain't going to be no more good. Listen, all you taking on multiple, and, and I'm guilty, I'm guilty, oh, I'm guilty of this, uh, taking on multiple opportunities when you don't have to. Uh, I have some opportunities that presented themselves that I got to make some decisions that I'm going to have to give up some stuff. I physically can't do uh, all the things I'm trying to do right now. And I'm looking at all the things I'm trying to do and I want to do, but I can't find no opportunities to rest in between those. So, hey, good morning, uh, frat. Uh, what's going on? Uh, so I had to, I had to make some decisions. I got to make some decisions. I really, me personally, I have to make some decisions because I'm not going to be able to manage everything I want to do uh, and try to be able to find rest and and be able to be because one thing is I don't want to be all over the place and I'm good and I'm not excellent in everything. Something is lacking, and I have to be better than that. And you have to be there. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to be the savior. Uh, learn how to delegate. Learn how to take some time off. Learn how to shut your phone off. Learn how to shut people off. Let me tell you something. People are the biggest drainer. So uh, you got people who are emotionally always helping. Sometimes you got to cut them, cut them off. What you say, all frat? You have to go get rest. Yeah, you got to get rest. Yes, you have to get rest, man. So that's the reality of life. Knowing when to shut it down. One thing I've learned how to do, I know when to shut this thing down. I do my best. Uh, I used to didn't know how to shut it down, but I've gotten better uh, in my own personal life, even in ministry, knowing when to say, hey, you know what? Enough is enough. Deuces. I'm shutting it down. Because if you don't, you your body will shut itself down. And you don't want to do that. Because when your body shuts itself down, it takes longer to recover when you have a spiritual, emotional, or physical breakdown than if you shut it down yourself. At least if you shut it down yourself, you can restart it. But if your body shuts itself down, it's going to take longer to recover. That's all I'm saying. And then then you, but when all you got to do is say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this day to myself. I'm going to go by myself, uh, whether it's through prayer or whatever. So I'm done. Uh, I'm done. Uh, I pray that you, you heard these words. Those who like to overwork themselves, 
You say, Mary said, really? Yeah, I, mean, I think I've gotten better, Mary. Come on now. You know I've gotten better. So <laughs> You know I've gotten better. But uh, I, I, I can be better. Okay, I can be better, but I've gotten better. So, <laughs> but um, I, I think so. I think so, in my opinion. I could be wrong. But uh, I just hope you heard my words. Uh, we want you to be prosperous for the kingdom. We want you to be here for the long haul. We want you to do great things. But you got to take some opportunities to shut things down. You got to take those opportunities. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It doesn't mean you're, you're, you're not going to be successful. But yeah, she said, yeah, be better. Yeah, I'm going to be better. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought. Maybe I can't be better. But Mary knows me better. She knows me really well. So uh, I be, can my, can, to be honest with you, y'all, sometimes my rest is not what you really consider rest. I, I say I'm resting, but I'm actually doing ministry, and that's really not rest. So, I, I, yeah, you're right. I need to be better. And I'm going to be better because if I'm not no good, then the people that's following me, I, I can't give them what they need. And then I'm failing them. So uh, pastors, preachers, leaders, even in your own businesses, knowing when to get some rest, take the time off, take the load off. Uh, listen, we don't want to assume that everybody here knows Jesus. Uh, if you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believe that God raised him from the dead, the Bible said you shall be saved. That's all you have to do is connect that with Jesus. If you don't have a church home and you would love to be a part of the Move Church, God to move, we'd love for you to be a part of us, to join with us, connect with us. Just send me an inbox, send me a message. And guess what? We'll get you started and we'll get you on a journey of success. I believe everyone that has been attached to this ministry has been blessed, has been prosperous because we are, because the God's anointing is in this place. And lastly, uh, if you'd like to tithe or sow a seed into our ministry, you can do that at Dollar Sign Got to Move or P.O. Box 2022, Cold Pepper, Virginia 22701. So listen, we thank you. Like I said, reminder, this Tuesday night will be I'll be at the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church uh, preaching their revival at 7.30. Then, so there'll be no Bible study. Then we'll be back in church this Sunday. Also, if you haven't, uh, please, and if, if you already are on Got to Move or like Got to Move, please invite other people to like the page so they can get on the page. Because starting in October, first Sunday in October, we will be switching over to that uh, uh, platform on Facebook Live. We will no longer be, I will share from my personal page, but we will not be doing live from my page starting October, uh, first Sunday in October. Listen, let us pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Uh, we ask you right now to continue to give us rest, give us the opportunity to 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 uh, be in positions, Father God, that we can get our spiritual, emotional, and physical health back in line, that we could be a blessing to the kingdom of God, that we'll be productive for the kingdom of God, Father God. I pray for Everyone that came on this line, continue to bless their homes, bless who they are from going in and going out. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless you. May God keep you. Have a good week. I'll see you soon. Love you.